Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're ready to find the moment of inertia about the x-axis for an I-beam like this. Notice that the distance from there to there is a total of 10 centimeters. The width here is 2 centimeters, 2 centimeters, and 2 centimeters. And the width this way and this way is 8 centimeters. All the units are in centimeters. We're trying to find the moment of inertia relative to the x-axis. What we learned in the previous video was that the moment of inertia of a section like this, that would be equal to a section like this or a section like this, can be found by using this equation. One third the width of that section times h cubed, h being the height of that section, plus three times the distance of that section, h squared plus three a squared h. And if we factor out an h, then we realize that h times w is actually the area of that section. We could write as one third the area times the remainder there. Now what we're going to do is try to find the total moment of inertia, which means we're going to sum up the moment of inertia of this section right here, plus the moment of inertia of this section, plus the moment of inertia of this section. So if we section this off right there, we notice we have three separate sections. Now there's perfect symmetry with section one and two. So actually we can simply double the moment of inertia of one of those. And then we add that to the moment of inertia for section three. Now we should already know what the moment of inertia is for section three. So let's go ahead and write that down. The moment of inertia for section three, since it's rotating about the x-axis relative to its center of mass, it is equal to one, well that would be one twelfth, the area of that, that would be the area of section three, so I'll go a sub three, times the, the dimension in that direction squared, so it would be the total length of that quantity squared. So this would be 10 squared, or the height squared, so to speak. All right? The area of three is two times 10, so that would be equal to 1 twelfth times two times 10 times 10 squared. So that gives us 100, 1,000, 2,000 divided by 12. And let's see if we can simplify that. So 2,000 divided by 12 equals, whoa, let me tell you, 2,000 divided by 12 equals, and that would be 167.7. Now what about the units? Well, we have, this is in centimeters squared, this is in centimeters squared, so this would be centimeters to the fourth power. So that would be the second moment of area, also known as the moment of inertia, using area instead of mass. So now let's find the moment of inertia of one of these sections, and we'll simply have to double it. So the moment of inertia of section one is equal to, so we're going to use this formula right here, which is equal to one third the area, that would be the height times the width, it would be two times eight times h squared, that would be this number squared, so it would be two squared plus three times a, a would be the distance to there, that would be five times h, which would be two, and then finally plus three times a squared, that would be this distance squared, so it would be five squared. All right, let's simplify that. So this is equal to 16 divided by three times four plus 30 plus 25 times three, which is 75. So that's 105, that's 109. So this is equal to 16 divided by three times 109. And what is that equal to? 109 times 16 divided by three equals 581.3. And of course, that also would be centimeters to the fourth power. So now we can find the moment of inertia of the entire I-beam relative to the x-axis by simply adding I1, actually doubling that because that would also be I2 plus I3. So I sub x is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3, which is equal to, well, I1 would be 581.33 centimeters to the fourth power. I just added one more decimal point and plus 
we doubled that, so we have another 581.33 centimeters to the fourth power, plus for the midsection there, that would be 167.67 centimeters to the fourth power, and that adds up to, so we double that, and we add that to plus 167.67 equals, and that gives us 1,330, we'll just round it off to the nearest centimeter to the fourth power, and that would be the moment of inertia of that I-beam relative to the x-axis. So notice that once we have those general solutions for s different sections of an I-beam, it becomes easy just to add them all together and come up with the answer like that. And that's how it's done.